All right, so uh, Golf Clash announced that the Thanksgiving tournament, the 2021 edition, these holes are all going to be at Vineyard Acres. I can't remember the very first Thanksgiving tournament in 2017. That was the first tournament I ever won. I was so happy to see the uh, the majors come out because the majors were the only thing that would push your banners down. And back then it was the other way. So now the first banner you won's at the bottom, but it was before where it was the first one was at the top. And so it was always the turkey. <laughs> I was happy to get I was happy to get the major banner so I could get rid of that. So let's go check out Vineyard Acres. This is a tough course, and I can't remember what the minimum is on it, but it is tough. So there are some holes here we we have super great opportunities, but this course can definitely eat your lunch. Now the holes in the Thanksgiving Day tournament, if you use Golf Clash Notebook, are in a different order. So hole number one in the tournament is actually hole number three of Vineyard Acres. And this hole has been, I think this is the, the redesigned version of it right here. So before the green was much bigger, um, the green was actually more in like this shape right here. And this area is a little bit different down here than it was. But we, we you can get on in one but the deal with getting on in one is you have to be very aware of where your second bounce is at. So I'll have to go back and watch some video on this to see which clubs I was using. But like you can easily get it done with an extra mile. And it's not like you have to bring out... If you bring out a bigger ball, you can start off on the other side. And it's always preferable to start off on the other side. You just have to watch what happens a lot on this hole is if you draw the line from the tee box to the to the pin. So we're having to take this route to get here and this is the critical spot right here where you can get caught up in that rough or that sand where everything went perfect. Your first bounce is perfect, everything's good and then your second bounce is is in the crap. Or you hit a little bit too close on it and it's kind of a roll downhill and you'll get this kind of a trip trajectory that'll put you over here you'd be amazed at how easy it is to end up in that sand just a little bit off so where i normally find myself is either is kind of out in this area trying to be right off the green <clears throat> and this is a hole that this is one of the this is one of the newer type greens where when you're out in this range right here you can make it you can always make it. There isn't any spot on this green that you can't get to the cup. But you may very easily find yourself in max overpower for that putt. And it's not all the way out at the edge. It, you don't have to be that far off in order to have a pretty difficult putt here. So I would rather actually be right off the edge coming up. And what that does for me is instead of putting this into play because I'm really trying to get that arc to go towards the cup, by coming out here, it gives me a little bit of separation here and it makes the shot a little bit more consistent. I don't have any opportunity here with this shot, obviously, to make a hole in one, but I do give myself a lot of room on the left and the right. So if I end up with a great to the left, I'm gonna be a little bit farther off. Great to the right, I wanna leave myself enough room so that I could end up being on. Those are the scary shots, actually, are the ones that are great to the right. Hole number two. Hole number two in the tournament is hole number six. And this is a, this hole, we absolutely positively have to get an eagle on it. So we, I mean, we have to start it off. We walked in day one. We haven't done anything and our, our professor gave us a test. And we have to pass that test. We have to get an eagle on this hole. There's just no two ways around it. If you do not get an eagle on this hole, <laughs> it's going to be super difficult. <laughs> I mean, it is tough. The people at the top of the bracket will all have eagle on this hole. Hole number two is hole number six. And I do need to go back. I'm gonna. I'll set up a playlist, and I'll put some because we've played these holes quite a, these Vineyard Acres holes quite a few times. And I'll put some tournament stuff in there so that you can see what the what it was like under tournament conditions, and what kind of adjustments I was making. 
Um, I know that there is a very slight adjustment on this hole, and this is an absolute serious hole in one shot. There, it's, and you can start off way back in the back, um, but it's a very, what you want to find is some spot where you can go back to it, where your white ring off, or you're up here and your white ring off, and then you've got your back spin and your side spin set, so you can set that up real quick, and then come out here and wiggle the ball around a little bit until the ball guides exactly where you want it. I do remember that we have a slight wind adjustment here, but I can't remember what it is. Hole number three. It's hole number four. Today we're just, basically today we're talking about like approach to the hole. And then we're going to have to go through with where we're at, what ball we're using, and what clubs we have. And we're going to have to figure out what kind of adjustments we need to make. I love this hole. I had a bad experience on this hole one time where I had somebody came out here and they duffed their, I went first and I was in the perfect spot. And where I was at was out in where this hollow's at. I was right out in this area. I think I was right up at the top of it. So I had a short iron rough bump right to the cup. Great look, great look for Albie. And they duffed their drive and got pissed and forfeited the match. <laughs> and I ended up getting an eagle and not an Albie. And it was like, hey, I... I, I rightfully so I got the eagle, but I I this hole you have a serious look at Alby here. So with a three power ball <clears throat> and a kingmaker working a little bit better because from where we're at on the T box to this area down here, if we just draw a straight line, you know, we're looking off here and we really need to, to make up this difference. So with red line on the ball, I think we can get all the way down here to the end, but you don't need to, you don't want to push the issue. It's better to be up here on the flat. And try and get it so that you're in a consistent spot down here because the second shot, really being able to work out the wind adjustment on this hole, and I'm not sure if it plays the same anymore, but it, it always seemed like you got your cup, you got the flagpole. It always seemed like I needed to be even like moving the wind adjustment around. I I always set the shot up right on the edge, the left-hand edge of the cup. And we'll see if that holds true in this in these rounds. When it comes out next week and we can start playing some uh, practice rounds or this weekend we can start playing some practice rounds, go out and practice some of these holes. And these holes used to be in Tour 7. I'm not sure if they are anymore, but uh, I've played these holes a ton of times. But we have an awesome opportunity with that rough bump. Now, you can come at this hole several different ways. When I first started playing this hole, um, we'd come at it with backspin. So you start up here, and it's got a huge-ass backboard on it. And so you can bring it back down towards the cup. The deal there is is that it, it's a shot in the dark. You can pick a spot out there, and it's difficult. It's, it's a hard shot to replicate because everything has to go your way. Whereas with the rough bump, we can take a lot of that stuff out of play and it's just a straight shot to the cup. Hole number four is hole number eight. All right, they changed this hole. Hold on one second. All right. They completely redesigned the green. It was, it's always been an island green out here, but the way that it used to play... Even if you had an upper developed sniper, if you came on this hole with a guardian, you could stick it. And if you came here with anything other than a guardian, it was a little bit of a struggle. But they redesigned it, so now pretty much whatever you got in your bag, you will be able to get it to work. And I remember setting up where my first bounce was down here, and I'm not sure if my first bounce was on the fringe and then moving, moving forward, or if I was using the fringe for my rings as my starting point but being start setting up in this area right here and just going straight out there is a slight wind adjustment on this hole as well but there's pretty much only unless you really wanted to go out there and get jiggy with the backspin um we pretty much just have one way to play it hole number five is actually hole number five all right this is a tough Hole, this can be a tough hole to eagle. 
but it does give you an opportunity for Albie. I've made quite a few Albies on this hole, and shot number one, there, there is a way to try and get yourself over to this side, but it is super, and I'm, and I'll have to see with, like, with the level nine extra mile, like where your, where your top spin takes you out as far as like getting over to this side. But if you, this is one of those holes, if you end up in the rough, you're trying to go for it and you end up in the rough down in this area down here, or even anywhere down in this area, you're screwed. You might be able to recover from some of these areas by coming over here and trying to bridge the gap um, to get yourself back up there. But this hole right here can eat your lunch. And if you end up overdriving and you're taking the shot coming down the chute and you overdrive and end up in the rough, you're in a world of hurt. Because it is a big dog from down here, even with a with a good sized ball, with a power three ball, to get you onto the green. And there are several ways that you can do that with the big dog. You can do the bounce over, or if you can get up there far enough, you can do a rough bump here. I usually do the bounce over where I'm bouncing over from here, trying to come at it. And I've had a lot of success on this hole, and I'm going to have to go back and watch some video on how I've played this hole in the past because this hole definitely gives us a great opportunity for Albi. It's, it's a low percentage Albi, but we can put ourselves in the right spot on the drive and getting yourself down into this area. And when you cut this into quarters, when you look at this area down here, you want to be, so your line, this, hold on one second. This area right here is kind of defining the line. And so you need to be on this side of that line so that you can work your shot out coming straight to the cup as opposed to having to start off to the right and then use curl to bring it back this way because this shot wants to be set up so that you can use a little bit of right hand to bring it back to the cup where the pin's out on the green. So you really want to be into this area, and if you cut this in half, this area in front is much more desirable than this area in back, even though it's not that big of a distance. It is huge down here on the other end. Huge. So you really, this is your target zone. I mean, we got this whole damn course out here, and you're aiming for this area. That's it. That, that's a success. Anything else is not is optimal it's not that you can't make it from someplace else but like this right here if you can consistently get to this spot and it doesn't take if you got a maxed out extra mile it doesn't take max top spin from that spot we have a great shot now if you bring a big enough ball you can use a sniper here and obviously you're going to increase your odds with a sniper because we've got uh, extra ball guide so you could bring out a bigger ball it's not going to do anything but help you. However, on the drive, you're going to have to you're going to have to tighten it up a little bit more so that you don't over roll it. Because if you end up in the rough down there, you're you're S O L. Hole number six is hole number two. All right, there's several ways to play this hole. I usually just lay it up right up here to the top, and I use a rock. You can use a quarterback. I used a quarterback forever, and the, and the only reason I don't use a quarterback now is because I've just switched that bag up and it has a rock in it. Uh, you can use a QB on this, no problem. You can give yourself down here two rings of separation off of this transitional surface. I will tell you, if you use the wind ring method to adjust out wind, and you're in this area and you're two rings off, so your ball guide's out here and you're going in this area to go up, and the wind's blowing this direction, when you spin it around to pull the wind out, these trees are in your way, so you'll have to come over to this side and push the wind out whenever you're over here by these trees, because these trees are definitely in the way. And the first time we're in that kind of wind and you forget to do it, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. <laughs> exactly. And you know the deal. So my goal is to get right up in here, and that gives me a straight up shot right to the cup, and I really don't have to worry about this based off of bounces. And I believe, if I remember correctly, I'm pretty much at min club, but I... <clears throat> and I... 
I think I was playing this hole at where I was, where it hits, and there was a slight adjustment on it. This, for me, this has always been a fairly tough par four to get an eagle on, although there was one tournament I played this that I did make some adjustment, and I was just on that week. I was just like, I, I sank it like three times. But normally this is a... Uh, is not a really good par four for me. So I'm going to work on this hole this week. And I want to, I'll definitely, when I do the practice round, I'll have some notes. I'm just like going through them right now just so that I can get some impression of the holes. Remember them. Hole number seven. It's hole number one. All right, this is another, there's several ways that you can play this. You can, you can play where you can come up here with backspin and try and backspin it to the hole, but normally you're going to be in this area where you're a couple rings off of this area right here going straight at it. I like my first... There's differing opinions on where the where that second bounce is, but I like my second bounce to be up here. It's very easy here because a lot of people are trying to hit off, and I wish I could zoom... This is as close as I can get on this picture. Hold on, let me... Here's the... Here's the fringe, here's the fairway, and here's the rough. And so a lot of people are going to hit on this fairway area, and I really want my, first, my second bounce to be on the fringe. Because if you're off just a little, or if anything goes wrong, it is super easy. And you see people do it all the time where they'll end up hitting this bank, and this bank is, I mean, here's the sand trap, so they'll end up hitting in this spot right here, and it'll go straight up, and they'll end up rolling back into the sand. This is a great hole to go for hole-in-one. I mean, we have a serious hole-in-one shot here, but if you're down in this area here, coming at it, it's very little adjustment. It's just a little teeny bit of spin, um, very little. I like to see my second bounce on the fringe, but I think a lot of people that are out there, their second bounce, I see their second bounce on the fairway. And I know when Zachary Jones was playing, he always had, his preferred method was to do this. So a lot of people may have uh, learned some of that way back in the day. Hole number. But we have a serious chance for hole in one on this hole. Hole number eight is hole number seven. All right. This was actually hole number nine in the tournament one time, and I was able to get the eagle on it. And this is a tough par four to get an eagle on, but there are some ways there. I've always just tried to have fun on this hole, and I have made a lot of eagles on it, but like if you're really trying to go for eagle. Now, when the game first came out, this, these trees out here were different. There was more trees in this area, and there was a lane that we could hit through if we wanted to do a max shot to try and get ourselves out into this area. And I do believe that there is a max overpower hook shot that we can do to bring it around, especially if you have upper developed clubs or if you have a rock, because you can bring out a, a rock with a power three ball, and hell, you're your red line's up here. So when you figure out doing a max overpower hook, if you started, if you tried to land here in the middle, um, where your second bounce is out in this range, you could, you may be able to get around the corner. I trying that shot a lot, you know, like this would be your target area, but I think you could do a max overpower hook and with a bigger ball and or more side spin ball to try and get yourself going more in this direction as opposed to going in this direction when you come around the bend where you can still make up some distance. But normally our landing zone is gonna be out in this area. And from that area out there, you have a very, and you don't have to bring out a big ball on this. But what you have to do is you have to bring out the right ball for the clubs that you have for the red line issues. Because what you can find yourself in is a red line issue from here coming to the cup. And you have several ways that you can go at it. There is a beautiful rough bump that you can do from here. But you definitely want to know what the wind adjustment is. And in my opinion, you absolutely have to have a backup plan. So that if the wind is blowing in this direction and you have to engage this sand, you can abandon that rough bump and go to another shot where you don't have to involve that sand. Because I, I definitely do not want to mess with that sand. That shadow out there is no joke. <laughs> It is very steep, so it is super distorted rings. You can come up from here and try and bring it up if you had the top spin, but at that point, I'm 
uh, if you can't do this straight up rough bump, there is a huge backboard on this, this backboard that's on here, and you can do a backspin shot where you're trying to bring it down that hill and bring it back to the cup. There's a lot of different ways that you can come at this. I've done that backspin shot a ton of times, and I like it just because it's one of those things when it goes in, you're like, it, it's mind jarring. <laughs> but it does, <laughs> but it's, but it's close all the time. And and I did that in one on one play because I used to play with a guardian a lot. And when we played this hole in tour seven, that was the shot with my wood that I would have to take with my guardian, and I would engage that back that backboard. And I just got really comfortable doing that shot. If you find yourself in trouble and you can't get to it from this direction and you have to come at it from this direction, I see people screw this shot up and I'm like, you got to look at the terrain here. This backboard that's on this green, I mean, if you've ever played this hole, I mean, here's the, here's the green and it's kind of going downhill. And then here's the freaking backboard. I mean, it's way the hell. I mean, it is a bowl. <laughs> if you came from this direction, right? If you were out here and you were trying to come in like this at the end of your shot, you're not going to carry enough speed. I don't even know if you could carry enough speed if you were out here where you found yourself in trouble with a big dog with max top spin on. Whether you could find yourself enough speed where you would roll out the top of this as opposed to it would it might it might flush out on the other side and get into the sand trap but i see people take the shot and they they're not thinking of hey you're you've got this backboard if you do a little bit of overpower or if you put on more top spin you can engage that backboard and it'll pull it down towards the cup and they kind of mess that shot up because they're not thinking of how they can use that terrain to their advantage there is a shot for, for Eagle on this, and I do think that probably the best way to go at it is that rough bump, but it can be dangerous depending on which way the wind's blowing. And you definitely want to know what the wind adjustment is, and we'll have to figure that out. And when the practice round comes, I'll try that rough bump, and we'll see what kind of wind adjustments we need to make. Hole number nine is actually hole number nine. So five and nine are the only ones that are the actual. All right. So... When this hole first came out, so Vineyard Acres came out, and I, if I remember correctly, the Vineyard Acres had like four or five holes, and then they came out with the rest of the set, and this was one of the newer holes that came out in that set. And one of the things that I loved about Vineyard Acres when it first came out, and I still love about it, is, is that it teaches you a lot about ball placement. So it's better to be in this spot than it is to be you know just a little bit like where you put your ball is important like you can overdrive a shot obviously you can underdrive a shot but on the flip side of the coin there's a lot of these holes where we can't really overdrive them we're just trying to get out there as far as we can right but we want to be consistent so that our second shot is repeatable but this hole right here is is tough to get an eagle on and when we first started playing it, the way that Tommy recommended that you play it was shot number one, shot number two, shot number three. And you'd be amazed at how many eagles I made on that shot. But you could also, I didn't like this shot because you're going into a super narrow area. You're at the very end of your run. At that point, we had like extra mile five sixes, and it's it blew. It was very easy to end up in the rough, and if you ended up in the rough, you were screwed. So I always like to hit out here, and there used to be a row of trees along here that terminated about that spot. You could hit through the trees, but it was super dangerous. So what I would do is come up here, and I would do a max curl shot to try and bring it up this run and usually end up somewhere about in this area and then take the shot to the cup and you'll see a lot of people do that but the way that everybody plays it now is they hit down into this area if you bring in a power three ball it's pretty easy you hit down into this area you'll have to figure out the top spin backspin for your club shot number two uh, big dog cataclysm those are your best choices we want whatever's got the most distance, most top spin, whatever, whichever one of those clubs has the most distance and the most top spin. It's very unlikely that you would be able to, unless you were trying to do overpower and you brought out some bigger than a power three ball, 
that you could end up in the rough of the sand over here. You can get over there, so I'm not saying it's impossible, but normally you're going to end up out in this area with a nice little short iron shot straight into the cow for you. And for most, in most cases, that's kind of the best that we can hope for on this hole. Hold on. All right, where was I? Uh, so <clears throat> here's the thing. Most people, like I said, are going to hit out to here, and they're going to hit over to here, and they're going to go for this shot. Now, you can get a little bit closer over here. You can do some stuff, but, but the mass majority of the people that you see, they're going to play this hole. This is the shot they're going to play. What I'm going to do on this hole, and it, it may be dependent on the wind, so if we get any kind of headwind, I may not be able to do it. If I remember correctly, um, it was hard to do if you had headwind here. But if you had any kind of side wind or any kind of tailwind, I'm going to bring out a power five ball. Probably, even though my apocalypse does not have as much um, top spin as my extra mile, I'm going to use my apocalypse because it has more curl. And what you're trying to do from the tee box, we're trying to end up out here. So this is the shot that we want. And this is the angle we're going to take. And so what you're trying to do is get yourself as, pick up as much distance as you can possibly pick up down along this transitional area. So usually what dictates where my starting spot is here is at max overpower, I'm going to slide my red, I'm going to slide across the red line where I'm two to three rings off of this transitional surface. And then from that point, I'm going to adjust for the wind and I'm going to do a max overpower, max curl shot, trying to bring it out into this area. And I have found myself where I actually rolled out, rolled through this and then ended up in the rough on the other side. But from this area over here, anywhere over here, sand or rough, your second shot with your rough iron puts you in exactly the same spot that you would be and you might even actually be able to pick up some more distance where you can get a little bit more around the corner and go for it but if you can end up on that fairway area and i'm not so sure that you can't do it if you're in the rough but if you end up on that fairway area i've tried it twice and I, the first time I was way off and, and so I was trying to do a max overpower hook shot and I started off way too far out and I ended up out in this area. And the next time I came in and I moved it way in and I was able to get out here where I actually think I ended up right off from that sand. I was in the fairway, but right off from that sand. So I was pretty close to being able to get around the corner. I was starting to run out of room because of this right here, but I am convinced that if we can get over to this area, even though these trees are in the way and, we've got, and we're trying to get this distance and we can't hit over the trees, we've got to go around them. I'm convinced that we can get from here onto the green or right on the fringe. Because I know the one time that I was able to get over into this area and make it, it was, you know, like that's, that was pretty easy. <laughs> Let's do that every time. While I'm on this hole, I want to talk real briefly about trees because this is the hole that taught me about trees. So let's say for whatever reason, you screwed up out here and the farthest that you can get up is right here. And so we draw the line to the green, man, you can't go through those trees. So you have to go out this way. Well, we all know how it works. You're gonna get somewhere out and around this area right here and your ball guide's gonna go wonky and it's gonna go red. So if you pointed the ball right here and you hit it just straight, you didn't do anything to it, it's going to clip that tree. And so the more you move it to the right, it's obviously going to get really red and you're not going to have any ball guide because the ball guide saying, hey, dude, you're going to hit these trees. In this situation, I would probably start my shot off right about down in here. So what I would do is I would think about where my arc is. Let me, let me zoom in a little bit closer. So you're down in this area and you got to get here and somewhere around in this zone right here, we've, we've ran into the tree problem. So what I want to do is I want to pull out to here where I can see my ball guide and I want to pull out to the distance because I want to kind of start my shot off probably somewhere out in this area. 
So I'm going to pull out so that if you think about from where you're at to this spot, you've got this arc and like pull out to where I think I'm on that arc and see what my ball guide looks like. So maybe I just need a, like, as far as distance wise, if I continued the arc over. So I put on my spin and in this situation right here, it would probably, it looks like it probably be just a couple back spin, max side spin. And I set the ball up right here, two, three rings off of this transitional surface. Am I guessing? Hell yes, I'm guessing. Because you can't see your ball guide. So you're trying to, to extrapolate from what you gathered over here to help you out over here. And that's where I'm going to set my shot up. Now you would think, okay, dumbass, you just told us how to hit a shot right into the trees. Ball guide does not represent curl. And so I see people set the shot up all the time where they set the shot up out here because that's where their ball guide quits because of this tree. And from out here, you have to put topspin on it and it's hard to get the tip of your topspin to whip around with the curl. So you're more apt to end up up here in trouble. And they fail the shot or they leave themselves well short because they were like, well, I can't, I can't go any farther this way because of these trees. Well, curl is not represented in your ball guide. So if I started my shot off from down here, and if I can get my pen to work, wherever the hell it's at. Ah, it's up in that freaking corner. It's hard to get it out of the corner. Little rat bastard. <laughs> there we go. So if your shot's set up down in this area and I'm setting my shot up here and these trees are completely blocking it, when I put the max curl on there, it's going to come around and go right towards the cup because that's not represented in the ball guide. So I never worry about trees. If you've watched my videos for a long time or you're just watching them now, if I'm ever around trees like that and my ball guide gets wonky, I will do exactly what I said. I'll pull off to the side where I can see my ball guide. I'll make what kind of an adjustment I think I need to make and then I'll pull back in where the trees are blocking it, set it up, set my shot up, give myself plenty of room from this transitional surface. It's a blind curl shot. And then I'm going to take and I'm going to add max curl on it so that I can just go right around the trees. Those trees aren't going to be in play. Hopefully, hopefully, maybe somebody out there who who has had problems. But if you've played for a long time, you pro you know exactly what I'm talking about. But if you're new to the game, trees sometimes people will set the shot up bad. And it's like, why did you set the shot up that way if you would just moved over? <laughs> All right. That was uh, the Vineyard Acres holes for the. 2021 Thanksgiving Day tournament. Hopefully, it won't be a turkey for the uh, for the trophy, so we won't have to. Uh, somebody else won't have to go through that uh, that turkey look if if that's their first win. <laughs> Thanks for watching.